Well, good morning. The stream will be starting in just a few moments, but while we wait for the stream, let me just um, introduce the channel and just discuss the other streams that come on this channel. Um, so today is the 5 a.m. programming stream. Uh, we'll be programming today, doing some assembly programming. Um, I also have a gaming stream. The gaming stream will be happening on Saturday. Um, if you'd care to join me for that, that um, happens the opposite time of the day, um, early evening in Japan time. And we'll be um, playing a little um, arcade machine tomorrow. We'll be playing this um, 201 game system. Um, the episode is going to be called QBK2 Revenge of Meh. Um, and I'm going to be going through each of the games, playing each game for one minute and giving it a short review. The idea being if anyone is um, unfortunate enough, possibly, possibly that's the word, to own this system, just to say what is worth looking at maybe and what certainly isn't worth we're looking at the one of the machines i've actually got two of them now one of them the, the unboxed the unopened one is going to be given away um, in a competition on my uh, web chat website forum if you go there and you show off some kind of programming project with some assembly in it that you're working on you have a chance to win it it's a random competition just pick two people from random people win little arcade machines um so someone will certainly own one and be interested in what games are worth playing so i thought it'd be a bit of fun to go through one of the games on that the 5 a.m stream this stream is a weekly occurrence so you can come every friday or thursday at this time depending on your time zone and um, we will have this similar stream today we're going to be doing some omega programming first and then hopefully assuming that is something of a success we'll be moving on to some um, some cpc programming so i'm mind just flat there for a moment um so that's what we will be planning for today okay well um so it's just a little bit early we've got two minutes left so before the official start of the stream so let me just discuss what i've been working on this week so it's been the vacation period of course and um i've been quite busy i've been working on the tutorials that are planned for next year now I'm going to be continuing the Z80 650 tutorials pretty much the same as I have been, although there will be a slight drop in the frequency there. Uh, hello Oleg, it's very kind of you to join me, I believe it's very, um, very early in the morning in your territory. Um, so starting next year I'll be doing x86, 8086 tutorials, so I've got um, seven of those almost complete, I'm just writing the last of the seventh, writing the web documentation, the source code's complete. I've got some ARM tutorials, primarily ARM2. I've got five tutorials, all, flat, all written up for that. The web content and the um, source codes are complete for that. And I've got three um, RISC-V tutorials, which are all written up and the web content is complete. So um, they're all just waiting for the videos now. The first of the 8086 videos will be going live tomorrow. That's already recorded. And the first of the ARM videos will be recorded tomorrow and is planned for the week after. So um, that content is going to be coming your way, um, and so that's that's what um, what will be happening. Um, Oleg, uh, it is an assembly competition, so I do have to say it's got to have some assembly in it. But um, if you made a piece of hardware and that piece of hardware had a ROM and the ROM had some assembly in it, or if you made a piece of hardware and connected. Um, and you connected to a uh, machi machine and you wrote some source code. The stream has actually stopped. I hope, hope you can all see seeing me. Um, um, and if you if that had some kind of programming code and you just vaguely discussed the programming code, but it, it does have to have some kind of assembly element to it. Um, I, I do have to say that because otherwise I'd be getting all kinds of submissions that weren't remotely related to programming. So I do have to be strict on that. It does have to have an assembly element to it and you do have to discuss in part the assembly element. But um, it could be very small, as I say. It could be as little as a little boot loader or um, that you wrote a small assembly test program as part of it. But um, I mean, if you've got, an, if you've got a, a hardware project relating to classic CPUs you know feel free to tell us about it in the forum I'm sure it'd be interesting so um, yeah anyway that, that as I say it's something something with an assembly component I think is the um, is the necessi necessity just to keep just to keep things consistent because otherwise I'd end up with people submitting projects relating to basic and projects relating to uh, bleaching their Amiga which as I say it is designed to encourage people to have a go at programming so it's got, it's got to be a, have a programming element to it Okay, well, anyway, um, I think it's time to start the programming stream. So let's go. 
Well, good morning um, and Happy New Year, of course. Um, I hope you had a fantastic Christmas and I hope the New Year has started off well. I hope your hangovers are starting to ease up now and um, maybe you've had to go back to work already or maybe you're still on holiday. I hope if you're back at work, I hope the um, return to the work ethic hasn't um, turned you into a sleepless zombie. And if you are still off work, I hope you've been using the last few days of your holiday efficiently. Well, anyway, whatever's happening, um, today we're going to be doing some Amiga programming. So um, what, what the plan is, is to continue what we were doing last time. I'm essentially writing future tutorials here. Um, with the Z80 systems, I had the simple series where we created simple bitmaps and then we got them moving around the screen with a joystick. And we're going to be doing the same here. Now, um, the, the series is currently ongoing for the... Um, for the 6502 systems and the 68000 systems will be coming later on. It's just everything's all scheduled up and it comes a little bit later. So I uh, just to say I'm, I'm quite far ahead and that's so that I can work on other systems and get new content planned. So um, we're going to be writing the Amiga version today because I've already written the other versions. So this is the Amiga is the last system I need to write this for. And so what I will be doing here is I will be taking the code that I've already written for one of the other systems and I will be transferring it across. So that's what we'll be doing today. Okay, so what I will, let's just double check what we've got here. So I've already named the file Amiga Joystick just before the stream started, but um, if we fire this up, move the window into frame here. This is warp mode enabled, but this um, machine is so slow, I don't think it actually gives us any speed up. So that's a shame. So we got that smiley on the screen, but it's not going to go anywhere at the moment. I'm thinking about it. Where's my joystick? Because I might need that joystick for it to go anywhere ever. Um, let's get that joystick over. Um, so it's a joypad to be pedantic. But um, as I say, we, we are going to potentially... <laughs> Some of these machines are configured to use a keyboard and some of them are configured to use a physical joystick. So I just do need to make sure I've got the hardware available to actually do the testing. So this is the code that we need to transfer across. Okay. So that's ST specific. That's ST. And here, here is the start of the code that we're going to need. And we need we need to copy all the way down to here. Now some of this code will need a few slight tweaks, but the basic starting point should be okay. It shouldn't be too difficult. So here we go. So we've got our X and Y position here. So we've got our dot draw sprite routine here. We just need to take this predefined X and Y out and take this load address of bitmap because we've got these bitmaps up here now. And then if I take this and I do DS, is it? I'm forgetting the command. It varies on every machine and every, every system. Yes, DS. We can just copy that. So what we're doing here is we're creating a blank sprite, you see. Not a smiley to draw the character onto the screen, but of course, when the character moves, we'll need to take it away from the original position and restore the background. And in a simple examples case, the background's just blank. So, um, just very simple way of doing it. I'm just creating a blank sprite here. If I was particularly concerned about efficiency, of course, I probably wouldn't want to do that. Um, what I would want to do would be to create um, a, a routine that just blanked the background, or maybe. If I wanted to be neat and clever, I'd have some kind of routine that backed up the background and then restored it, or something like that. And there's, there's a lot of different options of how you could cope with this. Another one is, in, is when this would work fine in this example would be to use XOR, which is where you invert anything underneath. If the background's blank, then the inversion just clears, just shows and hides the sprite. But if two sprites overlap, you do get a slight color distortion, which of course is not. Um, not ideal, but um, to be honest, I mean, it tends to be okay. I mean, there's there's been plenty of um, very good, very enjoyable games that have um, used that simple technique as a way of um, getting colours onto the screen, um, and it, it works just fine. Uh, one that I remember particularly is Doc the Island of Doctor Destructo. That um, 
that used that technique and it looked very good. So um, even if it's a crude technique, it, it can be perfectly ex excellent for your system, for your game, just depending on what your visual style of your game is going to be. If you've got a complex background, that's probably not going to work too well. But if you've got a game with a simple background and fast, fast graphics, that's going to be great for you, I think. So anyway. So what I've been doing here is I've been um, just copying the data over. Um, and now we need the joystick routine. Now I've already done a tutorial on the joystick routine and so we've got this piece of code here and we can just transfer this across I think. So if we just put this um, put this down at the bottom somewhere here, just put it before this bitmap data I think. Okay, so this is returning in D1 here. Is it D0 and D1 it uses? I guess it is. Okay. And we just need to find the reading routine here. Oh, okay, there isn't one. <laughs> There's not one, okay. need to put a jump to subroutine in there and if I have a look around um, where is it? And you just need to um, make sure that this routine isn't going to mess with my, any of my other registers because um, that's going to cause a bit of a problem if it does So we're going to move D2 to D7 here. Um, we need that to be, I think, which, I just need to double check which register I'm using here. So it's D3. happens here it compiled that's a good start I see no sprites um, oh I know what I've done I've, I make the same mistake every single time I do this um, the bottom of the code uh, has a help help routine and it needs to be changed to return every single time I've made this program and I've made it quite a few times I made the same mistake it's very silly let's fight up again Amiga does take a little bit more time to start up, unfortunately. I don't know any more, any way of... Oh, oh, oh. Um, well, it moved around and then it stopped. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> well, uh, unexpected. Um, I think, first of all, I need to test check my physical joystick is actually being understood by the emulator. So... Um, because moving around so many systems and so many joy, joy pads and things, I, um, it, it, it is very possible that um, that I'm actually, you know, it, it's mapped to the numeric keypad and I'm using the wrong keypad or goodness knows what. So let's just let's just check. I understand what is actually. Um, Sprites move check yes, Mark, but they didn't move. It wasn't me controlling them, um, so I don't know what was going on there. Okay, so my um, my gamepad here is being is being is responding to the um, uh, emulator. The emulator is responding to the gamepad, so we're we're off with a fighting chance here. So let's have a look at the code because I'm probably just doing it wrong. So we don't need to use allow joysticks. Some some need the joysticks turning on. This isn't one of them. So um, so this is returning in D zero then. Um, I think. And my code is moving 
d0 into d3 here and that's what's being used down here we're backing up d0 that's not right oh, I've forgotten to change one of them I've forgotten to change it should be d2 d0 to d2 and d4 to d7 and this needs to match because these, these are my push and pop commands getting very confused all these systems have different push and pop commands it's very confusing so I say I've been um, been programming three different assembly languages this week well um, you can't tell this but uh, it's going backwards I'm pressing left and it's going right and right and it's going left and down and up and backwards as well so okay um, So the reason it's going backwards is these are branch if equals, which will branch if the bit is zero, but the bit's default is one on this system, on, on this on the, this joystick reader, so I need to change these to B and E, branch not equal. So now the directions are all moving correctly. Hello there, Luke. Very kind of you to join me this morning or this afternoon. Well, I'm not sure where, what time zone it is for you. Um, as I said, to, said earlier, I don't know if people missed it, but I hope everyone's had a happy new year. I hope you um, you enjoyed your holidays and you've made the best use of the time and you're feeling eager and enthusiastic for another miserable grinding year of work or whatever. <laughs> Okay, so um, this seems to be working okay. The only thing is um, I want the up and down to move a little bit faster to match the um, to match the left and right because uh, the left and right is moving very fast and the up and down are not. So we'll change these to eight. I'll try that and see if that looks a bit better. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Mark. I, I, I know I, I wasn't trying to get you down. I was just um, facing reality with a smile. Let's 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 call it that. <laughs> well, okay. Well, the 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 um, smiley is now moving around the screen, and the directions all feel like they're moving into this equal speed. So that looks like it's going to be okay so I think um, I think this Amiga joystick routine is now reasonably done I mean we probably want to make a little bit of tidying up to some of the code in places but um, but I'm pretty happy with that okay so that's going to be at the end of the 68,000 side of things here because um because we're done we've, we've done all of our all of our programming here um, so let's just move over to um, to my X. No, the D. So just a moment, please. Um, so I need to go to Dev Tools and Learn Z80, and I need to mount this drive. <coughs> Excuse me, My cough's not quite gone yet, um, and. Um, we're going to be doing some work in Win8 now. Let's so just position Win8 here. Get this into window nicely. We're going to have a bit of a challenge keeping Win8 and the, the output on screen at the same time. I think we're probably going to be unable to do so. But... Um, so what we're going to be doing here um, is doing some very very early work on a new project that I'm hoping to do and it's going to be on the um, CPC first and then it's going to move on to the other systems. Um, now on my live stream, the June live stream, I did briefly play a little game called XQuest which is a simple, um, it's a, the original is mouse controlled and uh, you have to collect like gems or something and you can proceed through levels and I thought it might be quite fun to try and recreate something like that um, on 
these systems, firstly the CPC and then the Z80 systems and then the other systems as well. Um, and just to see, um, see if we could create something similar because um, it's a simple enough game that, that, that it, there's a prospect of me writing, porting or recreating it rather um, in a reasonably short amount of time. But I think it would be interesting. I have had a few people request that I make a tutorial series building up a game week by week or something. Um, that's sort of what the Grime Z80 and Grime 6502-68000 series did. But um, I say it's, it's something I've had quite a few people ask for that. So, um, I mean, it's something I'd like to do. It's just also a lot of work. I mean, even a very simple game, you know, on... Um, on the um, on assembly can be a lot of work and if you don't do it right you're going to end up with something that simply doesn't work at all so it's, yeah, it, it, it's kind of a case of um, you know you can't if, if, if your planning is poor or your commitment is poor um, you can't be sure you're actually going to get a usable result at the end of it unfortunately so um, from the point of view of creating tutorials um, you know, I'm releasing three tutorials a week I can't unfortunately can't spend time, a lot of time on something that I can't be reasonably certain it's going to result in a, a viable tutorial at the end of it because if, if I didn't if I didn't work like that I'd end up with no tutorials left so um, we're going to be trying it in the um, in these live streams just a bit of fun and um, if we manage to get something usable as a result of it, then that result will be used in a proper tutorial later. That's the plan. So, um, just copying this code here. So, um, what's going on here is, um, well, well, um, I guess we actually need to recreate this entirely. Um, this version of this bitmap drawing routine doesn't use the firmware, but my previous example, which was reading in the joystick, did use the firmware, and I think that's going to be um, subpar for us. I think we want to avoid using that firmware, so um, so it means I've got to recreate this routine, which is not going to be fun. So um, let's load in. Let's load in a system like the um, Enterprise, maybe. Let's have a look at the Enterprise. Sorry, just bear with me. I've just got to look at this code and work out how it works. Yeah, I think this one's going to work quite nicely. Um, the, the problem... Um, I, I, the simple series was designed to get the job done as fast as possible so um so it was using the firmware but using the firmware can be a problem so um we, we, we don't want to use the firmware in our game if we can avoid it um so i'm just going to save this Uh, yeah, Oleg, I mean, it, it depends on the complexity of the game and it depends if it was designed to have that done or not. Um, but um, I, I managed it with Grime 6502, but um, as I say, it, it could certainly be tricky. So. over my code here and so we've got two bytes per line here and we've got eight lines 
And now I need to press F9, not F6, to compile my code, which is going to cause me all kinds of confusion, which will be nice. So, I need those X and Y positions here. I'll like you're, you're attempting that um, Chibi Akamas port to the um, UK and C, aren't you? How, how's, um, how are you finding that? I can imagine it's going to be pretty tough. Um, I used <coughs> I used a lot of things that were um, very, very um, Z80 specific, you know, like the Y register and things. So I can imagine that's going to be a bit, um, bit difficult. As I said before, I think if it was me, I'd be... I'd be just looking to rewrite it from scratch and just, you know, use the same sprites and you know, the same kind of um, design clues, just for the just from the point of view of you know, being being so tough to do that. But um, so. I need joystick routine then, don't I? Bear me a moment. It's been so long since I've worked on the 8 bits, <laughs> very much it's a bit tricky to remember it all. Um, okay, um, so for now. For now, I think we're going to keep using the firmware for the joystick. I'm going to have to look into it. It's going to take ages to look into that. It's going to give me a headache, so I don't want to do it at 5 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> um, so let's um, we'll, we'll stick with this one for now. Maybe we'll code that out at a later date. need this code here mm -hmm. and where's my emulator window gone where is it yeah, Win8 doesn't play nice, does it? It's hiding, hiding back there. Oh, got a smiley. Um, it's not moving though. Wonder why that is. So let's check our settings, general, input, no, it's not moving, okay, well then, um, Again, we've got to just double check our hard the physical Windows hardware. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. So let's try the previous example I did and just figure out what that, what it's actually reading from. Okay, so it's reading my physical joystick there. So that's that's okay. So let's save this again and have a look at why that's not working. 
So we've got reading in from the joystick here with this. Um, this is a firmware function, which I prefer not to use. But as I say, in this case, I think. Um, ah, OK, I know what I know what the problem is here. So um, the ink and deck routines are still the old firmware ones. And um, that's not going to be right for this, this system. So because um, the um, Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like. Um. That's interesting. I didn't didn't realize that the um the arm does the same thing. Um. I I I, I can't comment on that. It's um. The, some some of the <coughs> excuse me. Some of the systems I'm used to don't do that sign extension. Um. But um. Some some of them. Um. So many do. I'm kind of not that surprised by it anymore, but I can understand why you're saying that's frustrating. Um, okay. Oh, grief! Oh, like, yeah. That, 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 that if you if you've got lim memory limitations and you're having to switch everything to words, that's going to be very bad. As I say, I, I think you should look at just recreating the game from scratch and not, not trying to convert the code and just making new code that produces a similar result. I think that, that would be, if if you, if you, if you if the, the, the end, that's the end game you're looking at, I think, um, you know, is to recreate the game, then I think that's going to be the best way because uh, I barely managed to get it to fit on a 64K CPC. And if, if you're having to convert byte, code, byte commands to words and things, then... Um, I think you're going to really struggle. But um, I say it, it's not a, it's not a. I'm quite amazed your your, your determination on that one because it's not a, it's not something I wouldn't consider porting um, Chibi Akamas to to another eight bit system just because um, because it it, it just wasn't. Um, it was designed too heavily around the the eighty eighty six for, for in my mind, so I, I wouldn't consider attempting it on another system. I mean, the only, the only thing is, if you were going to port to something like the Amiga, then it, it would be beneficial potentially to recreate the um, to recreate the 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 code that handled the level the the, um, the event stream, as it's called. That might be worthwhile. That's still not working. So quite disappointing. Oh, it looks like um, <laughs> looks like the code's running. Goodness knows what. Um, I wonder how that's happened. <laughs> uh. Mismatching push pop maybe. Um, so I'm just so if you're not talking there, it's time to think about what on earth's gone wrong here. Um, so I say the first thing I'm doing here is I'm just trying to make a um, version of the version of this routine. I can't remember the. It's been so long since I programmed this. I can't remember the commands to control it. Um, each system has different keys for everything in it. Say it. Becomes very difficult. Yeah, that's running completely wrong, completely the wrong code there. I don't understand what that's doing.
call blank player, call draw player, infinite loop has got a return on it. If that pause has got an infinite return on it, and the infinite loop starts up here, start draw down to there. So if the code is just going crazy like that, um, that implies there's a return missing or a or push and pop are not matching. I can't see any problems there. Look. Okay, well, let's. Um, Let's try compiling this and we'll step through it. Okay. So we'll watch that stack. Okay. Hmm. Tracing codes are right pain. Um, okay. So, something going wrong here. So, 1010 is on the stack. That's the starting position of BC. And that's being pushed on here before the call to blank player. Okay, so blank player is pushing. Oh, okay, but blank player is pushing BC here. But um, this sprite drawing routine isn't popping it back. Um, probably okay. So that, that's why that's not working. It's um, there's slight differences between the uh, well. That's the whole reason I'm doing this. Is the, the sprite routine that uses the firmware uses two words, and the sprite routine that doesn't uses two bytes. Now, because I'm planning to port this to other systems. <coughs> Using two words is not going to be inappropriate. I want to work in bytes on all systems, 8 and 16 bit later on. Um, yeah, Mark, um, it, it can be very handy. Um, unfortunately, you, um, a lot of systems don't have it, um, so I've come to not rely on it, but that's why I'm programming. My plan is that um, this game is, if, if I can complete it, this game is going to be ported to all the other systems in my tutorials, both 8 and 16 bit. But um, I'm programming it on the CPC first because, um, because the debugging tools are best. So if I have trouble, which I'm likely to, um, I'll be able to fix it more quickly. The other thing being, because I'm on a live stream like this, it does make it a bit more, um, does put the pressure on a bit more. So um, I want to work on a system that has the lowest probability that I'm going to be sitting here staring cluelessly at the screen for many, many hours, which is always a risk, whatever system I program on, but it even especially so with a system with no built-in debugger. So um, as I say... Um, that's the reason why I'm using this um, using Win8 today. Um, oh, okay, well something happened. 
the sprite's not clearing. Um, we can probably have a look at that. Um, let's just clear that. So I know I notice I've changed. I've not changed this to add four, so that's why I couldn't move down. Um, this is using B and C. Okay, there. Draw player routine here. There's a blank player routine here. That blank player isn't working though. So let's have a peek and see if we can work out why. Why that blank player is not working. Put the blank data there. see any reason oh oh yes of course there's a there's a second copy of load so we're blanking the sprite with the sprite that's it's not going to go well so we'll just compile that there now why am i wiggling left and right as i'm going up and down why is that a thing? Okay, well, we need to look at that. That's not right. I keep nearly closing the emulator window, which of course will close this as well. And one thing to note is unlike um, Notepad++, then WinApe doesn't save your work every time, and which is fine, except sometimes it crashes. I have had but on very rare occasion it crashes and um, you might be crying if you've lost all your work. Um, so yeah. So. It's a thing to be aware of there. Okay, so the accumulator is getting changed here. So how did we, I think we used a temporary register on the other systems, D, okay. So we'll do that here as well. Because if we can use, if we can use the same things, we'll, do, we'll just do the same. A little bit one D command. We can. I was thinking, thinking that was a bit superfluous there. So we can just do bit two comma D, three comma D, bit zero comma D. There we go. Be a bit more efficient. So uh, we move to the top and the bottom of the screen, just checking my boundary rules here. Okay, I think that looks about right. Okay, very good. So we've got a moving cursor here. So let's save this. I'm also gonna save it as joystick. No firmware. Now, this is a slight lie there because it is still using the firmware for the joystick. But um, I will, um, I will work on a, a joystick firmware, a firmware-free joystick routine at some other point. But for now, um, I'm not going to because I want to move on with this. Okay. So, just. some of these down it's getting confusing and if we use um, sources where is it CPC Y quest okay so this is um, this is the starting point for our little game then so okay I'm just 
thinking what I need to do here. So I think um, the way I'm going to do it is we're going to simulate with the um, the X quest. What would happen is you would move the mouse and that would send the the cursor flying in that, that direction. So what we're, we're going to recreate the same and we're going to use the joystick to define the direction that the player moves. But the player is going to continue moving in that direction. So we're going to have a, um, a player acceleration. And, and, and that is basically going to be added to the current player position with each tick. So if it's zero, the player won't move. But if it's not zero, the player is going to be flying, flying in one direction or another. Um, so the reason I'm working, I'm going to be working in bytes in all cases here. And that's why I just rewrote that code because it originally worked in words. And as I say, if we're going to port to other systems, we need consistency. And also if we're writing a game, we need to be as fast as possible. So um, <clears throat> working in bytes is going to be a bit, little bit faster. So we'll be working in bytes. So we've got this Excel X and X acceleration Y. Now, let's just get up a notepad here. I'm just going to copy the. I often keep a notepad open with just sort of things that I'm going to want to copy paste to other positions in the code. So, um, so we're going to want to set these, and so in case, instead of doing a sub four here, what I'm going to do is set the y acceleration to minus four i think that's the most efficient way of doing that <coughs> um actually i mean we could we can put we don't need hl up here so we can put we can load HL there with the Y, and we can load HL with the X there. That will just save a little bit of um, code there. And so that's going to be plus four. And then because we're moving in half, we're moving in bytes here. So we're moving in four pixel blocks left and right. So with these, we just want to set it to um, one, minus one and plus one here. And then I'll go and leave that as a four, so that's not right. So there we go, minus one and plus one. Okay, so we've got our acceleration y, our acceleration x, and then we need to. Where's the code? There it is. So here we want to do load a comma acceleration x add b and then load a with acceleration y and add c let's see how, let's see if that does what i need oh, I, need to, I need to keep resetting that emulator every time so at the start we're stationary and then if i press That's not worked. Why is that? And it's crashed. And I've crashed the machine. I've gone off the screen there. Hmm. That doesn't. Why is that not working as I was intending? Oh, okay. Um. So I need to take the infinite loop out here because at the moment it's not processing if the keys aren't being pressed. So that's going to completely defeat the purpose of the acceleration there because I need the player to move even if the cursors aren't being pressed. So if I press down, there we go. That's what it's supposed to do. Um, it's not supposed to crash and go. It's not supposed to go off the screen and crash. But I guess you can't have everything. Um, not quite. I'm not sure quite why that's happening. Um,
Okay, uh, yeah, I know why. Um, it's because I'm not loading back into B and C. So the boundary check here is, isn't, um, isn't actually checking the latest version here. So we'll just change that there. That's more like it. There we go. Now, in actuality, when we hit the boundaries here, the player will die. So, um, so we don't need to worry about the boundary check from the point of view. Of, we don't need to make the player bounce when they hit the sides of the screen or anything. Um, but, um, well, I mean, saying that, I haven't quite decided what the rules of this are going to be, this version, because I'm not going to recreate the original. I'm just going to create something inspired by the original. And if you want to see the original, if you if you search the abandoned web sites, you can find it. And also, if you see my June CD video, the first 10 minutes was playing the original game. Um, what I'm thinking is it's just going to be a single screen affair with no scrolling. And so enemies and power and um, and collect and the um, crystals you have to collect will appear on the screen. Probably it's sort of random and you have to collect the crystals and dodge the enemies. But just within a single screen, unlike the original, which was basically four screens by four screens with scrolling. I think that's going to be a little bit too difficult, at least in the initial phase. I mean, if it's a real if it goes well, I might add things like that to later of game later. But initially, I think, you know, that's going to be too much. So um, I'm going to just keep limited to a single screen. Um, and as I say, uh, thinking just uh, my initial thoughts are probably make the player die if you hit the edges. But maybe I'll change my mind and maybe. Um, And maybe that won't be the case. But um, I do need to um, I need to change the rules just a bit more here because that's um, oh, that's quite nice. But um, we I think we need to be able to allow the player to um, to change their acceleration, not just because at the moment I'm kind of stuck moving diagonals. So what I think we need to do is do load a comma hl. And then add four, and then load HL comma A here, and this one needs to be sub four, and this one needs to be thick HL, and this one needs to be ink HL. So now, if we compile this version, um, I've missed something out. What have I done wrong there? Oh, well, that was pretty silly, wasn't it? Okay, if I compile this now. Oh. Okay, something's not right there. It's gone quite crazy. Um, let's have another look. What have, I've, I've clearly, clearly done something quite silly there. So let's have a look. See it. I can't quite see what I've done wrong there. Um, let's compile it one more time and just have it again. Okay. Let's try left and right first. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Um, Moving very fast. Um, didn't move that fast last time, did it? Well, I, I guess I guess that could be correct. Um,
Um, well, I, I think um, I think part of the problem is that it's now able to kind of go so fast. We're able to skip over the boundary conditions. Um, so um, so um, we might need to have a look at that later. Um, okay. Well. Um, for now, and as I say, I think this might not be needed in the final game. Um, but I'm just thinking, I'm just think this through. What we, what should we do? I think we need a timeout. I think we need to ignore multiple direction presses within a certain time. Because if the player holds right, we don't want to set the acceleration to 128. We want to set it in slow increments. So. Um, so let's have a key timeout and key timeout db0 here and we'll load in we'll put that just here So we'll load HL with the address of, of that value, and then we'll go with the A comma HL or A. So we can that's effectively setting our flags, and then so JR if that's zero, Z comma process keys. But if it's not zero, we're going to do a deck of HL. Actually, there's a there's a more efficient way we can do this. We can do it. We can do the we can do the deck here, and then we can do a jump on carry to here, and then we can do no 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 that that's not right. That's only if we load it into the accumulator. Okay, so we'll leave it. We'll leave it like I think that's probably as good as we can do. And then if 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 that's not zero, then we're going to jump down here and skip the player control. So the player won't be able to change the acceleration too many times for the while the game's running. Um, and let's see how this see if this fixes our problem here. So we'll put a jump, so that's going to skip player input. Okay. And now I can't move at all. <laughs> um, okay, so I've obviously done something wrong there. Oh, oh, it flickered. It flickered, but I can't move. Um, okay. Yeah, okay, I know why. Oh, it's because the accumulator is being used for the input, so that's not going to work. So let's put a, a D in there. We should fix that. thinking here I'm just thinking how we're gonna post do the do this now so so let's load E with zero here um, and we're gonna use E as a marker for if we've actually changed any of the key directions across this so we'll load E with um, five here and we'll do, we'll do the same here and here and here. Right. 
don't know if that's a valid command. Um, I'm going to check my assembly cheat sheet here. Um, no, it isn't. Um, we can only load a word in that way, so we'd have to load A with E and load E into key timeout. Now, what we are going to have to do though is create a new one called Joy Skip. And we're going to jump to there if we're not processing the joystick on this tick. So here's our timeout. The E is going to be our timeout on the joystick. And that should allow the acceleration to not go completely crazy. There we go. That's a bit more like it. still pretty crazy but um i mean maybe we need to to only apply the acceleration every other tick or something to make the make the make the character move slow or slowly it's it's still pretty out of control for such a small screen um for now just to test that let's change out we, we've got this crude delay loop in here we'll probably we'll possibly change the, it so it's not a delay loop and it's actually a um a, a um display and tick loop so that rather than rather than pausing the code we're still running the code but we're just not updating the player position every tick Thinking it through here. Um, just trying to imagine how this would play with all of the um, other elements in the game. You know, if you're trying to dodge things, is this going to be okay? I mean, you really aren't going to want to move very fast, though. I don't think, because you know, because the actual game would have sort of mines on the screen and things. So we we do in some cases need to um, needs quite precise movement, but. Um, being able to quickly dodge does have its advantages as well, you know, being able to skip out the way. Um, so this is the initial, this is going to be the initial point for the game then, I think, for starting. Um, what we're going to need to do next, really, is we're going to have to um, add the ability to have other objects on the screen. Um, we've just got our smiley at the moment, uh, but we're going to need to have various other kinds of object. We're going to have to have enemies that will move around of their own um, their own volition. We've got to have um, objects that don't move at all, like um, power-up crystals that we can collect. Um, and you know, we're going to have to have things like bullets as well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create all of these objects in the same way. We're going to use some common code for all of them. And I think we're probably going to use the same code for the player as well. I think we I think we're going to have we're going to actually define every single object in the game as being the same kind of entity uh, from the point of view of some of the graphics routines um including the routine we've just been working on the um the movement routine so um so let's have here let's just think this through so we've got our X position, our old X position, our acceleration. Um, let's have a sprite. Let's let's have the sprite at the start here. I'm just trying to think what this array will look like. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call this routine here, which we'll call draw object and we will call this with ix pointing to the start of the data array so the data array could be the player or it could be this other array which will be like a 256 byte 
object array, which will be all of the objects on the screen, and there'll be a bullet array for the bullets the players shoot and things like that. So, but we need a generic piece of code that will work in all cases, and we need to be able to pass the object that the code is being told to draw here. And so we're going to do that with IX here. So rather than loading in test sprite here, we're going to load in and we're going to load in player object plus zero. which is going to be ix plus zero. So the address is ix and the offset is zero. And zero is going to be the pointer to the test sprite here. OK, I think that's going to work. Now, what we need to do, though, is at the start of our code here is we need to load ix with um we need to load where is where are we going to put this down here i think ld ix comma player object and if we compile that and just double oh dear i made a mistake okay okay so um what uh, we can't load a pair in from ix um so what are our options here? So we can load D and E separately. So it's little endian, so we need to load E first, and then we need to load D second. Now it's important to notice these do use um, a couple of extra bytes rather than something like HL. So by using IX like this, we are making our code less efficient on a line by line basis. But as I say, I'm hoping to be able to reuse the same code that draws the player for drawing every other object in the game. And if we created a piece of code that did the player and then another piece of code that did the bullets and another piece of code that used, did the um, enemies and another piece of code that did the um, collectible, um, the gems, whatever the, the um, thing we're supposed to be collecting and to continue the levels are, we'd need to have multiple pieces of code. So by creating one relatively complex piece of code, Hopefully, we're going to save memory later on because we'll only have one piece of code. We'll also save debugging later on if we do it right, because having one code, one piece of code that does everything means we've only got to focus our debugging and optimization in one place. Whereas if we had multiple pieces of code, we need to debug multiple places. Now, the, um, the caveat to that is that um, if we do this wrong, We'll end up with a very piece of complex piece of code that don't work, and then we'll have to debug a very complex bit of code. So, um, I mean, my I'm no amazing programmer, so my strategy is just to um, just to, as you can see, com, you know, do repeated compiles and just test each stage, so that if a bug does creep in, we can catch it hopefully pretty quickly, and you know, get get it out of there. So. Um, OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to copy all of this code and we're going to put that into the sprite drawing routine, the draw object player routine. OK. That looks OK, I think. Yeah, that's OK, because um, we're still using this blanking routine. Um, we still need that blanking routine for all of the objects, I think. I'm just, think I'm just trying to think this through. I think we want that like that. What I do want as well, though, is I want I'm going to want to load in the position at some point I just need to double just need to think where I need to do that but for now I'm happy with this so okay so 
Let's think this through. So I'm going to create some symbols here. So we're going to create um, O for offset. So this is going to equal zero because the player sprite low address. Well, we'll take play out because it's not necessarily the the um, it's not necessarily the player. It's going to be used for multiple things. So the offset to the player address is zero for the L, and H is one, and then is X pos is two, Y pos is three. And X pos two is four. Y pos two is five. Acceleration is six and seven. So these are the relative offsets here. Now, one thing to note, I could calculate these by saying this equals, uh, you, you could say x pos equals player x minus player object. You could do that. Um, I think we'd be safe doing that, actually. But for now, I'm going to do it like this. The reason is um, if you start doing very complex mathematics, and that's not very complex, but if you start doing very complex mathematics, you can have trouble converting between assemblers. Um, Vasm likes to, is quite happy to have brackets in its calculations, whereas um, WinApe isn't. Um, and WinApe doesn't do multiplication and division first. So if you do 5 plus 2 times 3, you would expect 2 times 3 to be done first and then 5 to be added last. But um, WinApe doesn't do that. It does it in a consecutive order. So it would do 5 plus 2 and then the result times 3. So um, you just have to be a little bit cautious with assemblers and just make sure that you're not relying on... Um, on the mathematics working exactly the same on all of them if, if you're um, doing multiple. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I apologise. Um, yeah, sorry, Mark. I, I didn't realise it wasn't on the screen. Sorry, I'm so, so busy concentrating on the... Um, so busy concentrating on the programming, I wasn't, um, wasn't looking at the um, capture window well enough. It, it, I, I do have it open, but it's too small. I couldn't quite see it myself. OK, so that's it. Um, Stephen, well, I mean, if you can manage to do one compile and get it all working, then that's great. But I make so many mistakes, I usually can't. Um, now, um, I, I possibly would do fewer if I wasn't on camera, but I don't want this to turn into a uh, Keith is stuck trying to debug a piece of code that doesn't work for four hours stream. So, um, so I'd ra I'd rather do lots and lots of compiles and have no mistakes than just have no idea what's wrong and be unable to complete unable to show anything that looks coherent on the stream so i'm being i'm being very pessimistic uh, the other thing is um winape is relatively fast for this kind of thing um the amiga one is quite slow so i would possibly be more um spend more time doing things with that but um yeah as i say i mean what i mean, with all of this kind of thing i think um I think you just need to do whatever works for you. Um, I don't think this. I don't think that there should be any shame in any method of coding that work that produces a, a result at the end. So if if you find you need to do lots of compiles, then do lots of compiles. And if you don't need to, and you can produce results without that, then of course that would be that's the best thing to do. So say so for for me, it, it's that's that's really what. Um, what I think is the best. So, okay. So we need to do our player Y position here. So we're converting all of this to be generic code that's going to use IX as an offset now. Um, and this will, I mean, initially, uh, in today's episode, this isn't really going to make any difference, 
Um, but later on, we're going to extend this code. And what we're the, the sort of foundation we're putting in here will um, will allow this code to work with a, an array of objects and, uh, and give all of the same functionality to each one of those objects. In other words, the ability to accelerate automatically. Um, and um, and the ability to draw sprites to positions automatically without any um, without any extra code doing that. Now, okay, there we go. Now I'm going to leave these. These are called player pause and player reset, and I'm going to leave that for now because even though this routine is now being intended to not just control the player, I think um, I think that's going to be okay anyway. I think I, I think for now at least that's that, that ambiguity, if you will, um, is not going to be a problem. Oh, I can't see my. Hang on, I've got to move this again. I'll move it back. Don't worry. <laughs> um, There's our cursor. Does it still move around okay? It does seem to. Oh, still getting stuck on the corner of the screen there. I think that some boundary issue maybe. So our, our player character is moving quite nicely around the screen there. Okay, so let's. Let's have a little bit of fun. Let's, um, let's create a, a doppelganger for our player. And we will do this in a slightly different way. So we'll, move, we'll just uh, do object array here. And we'll have a bullet array as well later because the, the, the game does have shooting. So we do need a bullet array of some kind. So what we'll do is we'll do DW and test sprite and then we'll do db 0 comma 0 comma 0 comma 0 that's the x position then the x acceleration is going to be 1 and then the y acceleration is also going to be 1 okay then 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 just double checking what I've done here got our test sprite here what I think Okay, yep, that looks okay. So, what we need to do here is once we've done our player sprite, where is it? Blank player, no, we don't want that. Player, re so I'm just getting a bit confused by my code here. We need to split things out a little bit, make it a bit clearer. So we'll just Put a nice separator there with some semicolons. If I find that makes things a little clearer. There we go. It's here I want to put this. So we're going to do LDIX comma. So we're loading in the object array, which only contains one object, admittedly. And then we're going to draw the player here. But before we do that, we want to draw blank. Is it called draw blank or draw or blank player? I can't remember. Blank player. Okay, so blank player doesn't change the position, but draw player does. And maybe we'll split that out so there's a, a recalculate player and a draw player and a blank player. Maybe we'll do that later on. Um, but for now, we'll just have it like this. And if I now do a call, oh, I forgot to reset my emulator. And if I just move around the screen now, oh, hang on a minute, it didn't didn't work, did it? No, it didn't. That didn't work. So I've obviously made a mistake here. Okay, well, let's have a look. It was supposed to create a second duplicate of the player that was supposed to start in the top left and move diagonally down the screen. So maybe I'm missing something here. Just 
Pero a mí me mola Big Design. Okay. Um, well, well, for one thing, um, I need to lo I need to load in VC here, don't I? So. Um, Okay, um, that's not working. What have I done wrong then? So I've got that object array here. I'm obviously not thought this through correctly. Um, loading in IX here, calling the blank player routine. Blank player loads the sprite address, runs draw both. Draw both goes down here, calculate screen position. Okay, um, okay, let's put, I think that needs to be here. Just reading through all of the code, trying to see what's wrong. The idea was that the second one should be a second sprite, which should start in the top left and then go diagonally to the right, because I've set the X position here as zero, and the acceleration as one and one, and then the sprite would be the same because that was set there. But um, but it's not working, um, and I don't know why. Okay, well let's. Um, Well, let, let's try some. Let's try disabling the blank play routine. I mean, it's possible. It's possible. It's happening too fast, and it's just going off the screen. And before I can see it, um, let's just. Well, okay. So he's shadowing me. That's not remotely right. What's going on there? Why? Why would that be? I mean, we've got various reasons why that could be happening. Um, it could be memory corruption. It could be. Um, I can't see it. I can't see what the problem is. So, um, we're using IX in all these places here. IX isn't being altered anywhere, is it? Maybe something else is using IX. Yes, they are, but that shouldn't. It's just a bitmap graphic. There should be two copies of the smiley face, and one should move diagonally down the screen with its own independent x, y position and its own acceleration here. Um, and then the other should be the controllable one by me. Uh, the fact that they're both the same graphic is just for now, I'll change it later. But um, they sh one should be using player object as its data source, and the other should be using object array as its data source. But. Um, For whatever reason, 
I mean, both are being controlled by the same movements and things, and I don't, and I don't see why. Um, it's probably because it's half six in the morning and I'm tired, but uh, <laughs> I can't, can't see what the problem is. Hmm. Let's just try commenting out the, because I'm not sure what this firmware joystick routine is doing. So let's just run that out just in case it's doing something that. Okay. So it doesn't look like the joystick routine is to blame. It looks like I am firmly to blame, which is um, which is understandable. Okay, do I, is it because I've got no, is it because I've got no backup of the player position defined? Is that, is that, when it goes off the screen that would be a problem, wouldn't it? Oh, okay, I see it. Yeah, it's because I'm adding B here. Um, I'm, I need to add the I need to add the expos here. That's why. It's, so it, it it's yeah, that's all it is. So I need to change that to add. And there's not actually any purpose in. I don't think I need those commands anymore. Oh, there we go. There is that, That's what's supposed to happen. So now I've got one smiley that's in my control, which isn't working right anymore for some reason. Um, but the other one is working fine. <laughs> Maybe I did need that load B and C. Let's just try again. So um, yeah, we, we, we're getting somewhere here. We're getting somewhere. So we, we, we need to back up the exposition like before. Um, not here though. Let's do it here. So let, let's change this. So let's do load load A into XPOS, load XPOS2, add X acceleration, and then store it back. Now I might. Now I could combine this code into the same part, but for now I won't. For now I'm going to keep it separate because I might want to have different boundary rules for different objects. I haven't I haven't quite thought that bit through yet. So as I say, for now I'm just going to keep that as a sort of separate thing. So that needs to be a load, a comma. That needs to be an add. And then we need to save the new value to ypos2. No, 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 it's in the wrong order. The new value is saved to ypos and the old value is saved to ypos2. Um, I, I could do something with a um, with a push pop or something, maybe. I don't know. No, maybe. No, that wouldn't work, I don't think. Anyway, um, so that's going to be okay think and if we do call oh, it's still not right I've still messed it up I've still messed it up why is it messed up I think it's because um, I, 
think it's because my um, blank play routine is relying on BC being loaded, maybe. I'm not quite sure. Hello, Hazus. Very kind of you to join me today. We're, um, we're doing a bit of early programming on the uh, this um, little game I was talking about writing. So um, I've managed to screw up my code, but um, apart from that, we're not doing so badly. Um, I mean, maybe we need, I think maybe we need to load in IX up here. I'm trying to convert this code so that it can drive two different players at once. Oh, well now, what? Oh, I don't, I don't now, now, now player one's fixed and player two's broken. That was unexpected. Oh, I, I rimmed out the blank player routine. Well, that, that would explain that then. Okay, let's try again. There we go. There we go. So now we've got two con we've got two objects moving around the screen now. So one is computer controlled. Um, Mark, I, I was going to call in into the stream anyway, so that that's fine, no problem at all. Um, if you're interested, we'll be continuing it next week. And as I say, it's assuming I end up with something playable as a game, I'll make this into a series of programming tutorials where we'll recreate the code once one chunk at a time in the same sort of way as you've seen here, but without all the confusion and, and mistakes. So um, yeah, there we go. So anyway, we'll just, um, I'm going to finish the stream at seven. So let's just recap over what we've done here on this code today. And, um, and I'll just discuss why we've done it the way we've done it. So the sort of starting point for this was, um, was almost the, um, the joystick example from the simple series. And um, what we've done here is we've changed it a little bit so that instead of moving only when the player presses the joystick, it now has an acceleration element to it where, where the player will continue moving in a direction, but we can press the opposite direction to slow down or we can keep pressing the same direction to speed up. Now the game we're, we're mimicking, the X-Quest game, is a, a mouse-based game and it has that acceleration element and the, that sort of part. And part of it is um, basically um, keeping con smooth control of your player to collect the items and avoid the, the, the dangers, but then being able to move quickly to escape the things that are coming after you. And uh, you know, usually panic too much, move too fast, and then smash yourself into a wall. That's kind of the challenge of the game. So then we're trying to recreate that a little bit with this. So what I've done is um, we've created that acceleration by changing the code here so that we're now using an acceleration element here. Where is it? Um, I, I can't. Oh, acceleration Y and acceleration X for the player here. And so we're setting those when the joystick's pressed. And those accelerations are being added to the current player position currently down here. So we're adding these down here instead now. So that was the first thing I did. And that gave the ability for the player to go flying around the screen somewhat out of control, which, as I say, is kind of what the game's supposed to be like, at least in my mind. So that was the first thing I did. And then I changed the code so that instead of being a static piece of code linking to the player variables, I'm now using offsets from, an IX, from the IX register. And I've created two copies of this data, one for the player just here, and one as part of what is going to be known as the object array, which currently only has one object, um, and that's just here. So what I think we'll do next, just for a bit of fun, just for the last sort of 10, 15 minutes of the stream, because I am actually off work today, of course, but um, I, I, I do have other things to do. So I'm going to be finishing the stream at the usual time. I'm, Got some. Uh, I've got the last part of the last 8086 tutorial to write, and then I'm going to be having a bit of a play with PDP and trying to write some tutorials on that. Um, it's a little, little bit of a difficult one because um, it's not one I'm very familiar with, but hopefully I'll be able to produce some content for that system as well. 
So here's our sprite editor here, and if we just um, file, just load in. Um, no, file, import palette. I think import spell wrong there. It's very good. Um, And if we go to res all sprites and um, bitmap test, just load in our palette here that I tend to use for the TV cameras. And we're going to just start drawing some graphics for this game. Now, the original game was called X Quest, so it's a bit of a 6502 joke. Um, I'm going to be calling this game Y Quest, um, an XY register kind of thing. So um, I was trying to think of a good name, and that was the that rather pathetic name was the best I've come up with. So that's what we're going to be doing. I, think I thought I don't worry, I didn't want to call it X Quest. I thought we needed something a bit bit um, bit different. But um, as I say, I think that, that's going to be what we'll call it. That sort of look like a Y. I'm struggling a bit with the 8x8. Eight eight. I'm, I'm going to be doing this game with 8x8 eight eight graphics just because um, I, I want to use the tile map. I don't want to have to use physical sprites, in, at least in the first instance, because um, that's very platform specific. So um, I think I think that's going to put too much too much difficulty on it all. So. Um, Just, just trying to work out how a Y should look. Maybe like that. It's a bit more like a upside down lambda or something. But anyway, so that that can be our sort of player character. And then we need some kind of terrifying enemy. Well, let's let's do them all in one in one tile here. Just to make things a bit easier for us. So um, let's have some horrible looking um, space monster. Can have antenna. Look a bit more like arms and antennas, but no matter, whatever. Just trying to draw something that. Okay. There we go. That'll do. That'll do quite nicely, I think. So there's our, our first of our sort of baddies, um, and we need a crystal. We need. A, we need. You're supposed to. Well, I mean, they they looked a bit like mines in the original. They didn't really look like crystals. I don't know quite what they were supposed to be. Um, let's um, let's just create a very simple diamond shape, I think, which is something nice and clear for the player, so that they know it's not going to kill them. New version does have an amazing flooded fill function and it even works sometimes so there we go we use that flooded fill um, and if we we'll just color the top part in white maybe give it a bit of a shine make it look like a shiny crystal maybe not sure if that works or not there we go I think we'll go with that so um, that's going to be our collectible object that's our monster, that's our player. Um, and we let's just draw the bullet as well. Because we, we're gonna need we're gonna need to have the bullets in the game at some point. Um, shall we just use should we use a smaller one or should we use a bigger one? Because the let's use something bigger because the, the old Specky didn't like didn't like small bullets. Okay, so we'll use that as our bullet. Okay. No, actually thinking about it. Thinking about it, we'll we'll keep it small for the player bullets, and we'll use a bigger bullet for the enemies if the enemies fire bullets. So that's what we'll we'll save that. So save the sprites, and we'll call this Y Quest. I'm tempted to call it W H Y Quest, like hey, kind of like why why am I bothering kind of thing. I don't know. Let's see if I think about that later. I don't know if it's funny or not. 
So we'll then save this as a CPC save, CPC binary sprite, save raw bitmap, that's the one we want. Binary sprites for, um, uh, for Chibi Akimas, the uh, Chibi Akimas Akio game engine. So CPC Y quest. And if we do Where's the sprites? Here we go. Keep, need to keep saving. Oh, I need to remember it doesn't save for you. Where's all sprites? If we set our player object to sprite data and our object array to sprite data plus, let me think this through, so 16 per sprite. So 16 times, uh, just no, just plus 16, I guess. Oh, it's already done it because I forgot to um, restart. So now I'm moving my Y quest icon here and the old enemy. Let's just see it one more time. So there we go. So now we've got two objects on screen. Now I will have a think about the white, the icon for these. Um, I probably want to have multiple frames of animation, I think, and probably two or four frames of animation but um, I'll think about that later on for, for the purposes of today's example though you can see we've now got our own sprites we've now replaced the sprites and you can see that the um, offset code for the sprite graphics is working correctly because now both sprites are being drawn by the same routine um, and as I say because I'm now using IX what I can do is I can make 200 copies of this data and then I can just put a loop in um, and I'll increase IX by um, you know, whatever. Um, I think it's probably about, is it eight at the moment? Yeah, there's eight bytes per sprite at the moment, but that will go up. That will probably be about 16, I think. You might want to try and keep it multiples of eight or something if you can. But, um, you know, as I say, we, we've got a, a bitmap at the moment. We've got um, an X and Y position and a, a movement speed. But we'll probably also add things like um, a... Uh, uh, object type so enemy friend foe um, bullet maybe maybe the bullets will be in a separate array altogether that might make more sense um, and also um, things like um, you know what you know, maybe timeouts for firing and things because the enemies might fire but they might fire relatively slowly we might also have some kind of intelligence marker so maybe there'll be like four different routines that calculate the enemy's um, decision making, you know, how, when they're going to change direction, um, are they going to seek onto the player, are they going to start shooting, are they going to turn around, things like that, because um, the routine that we've written here is just for linear movements, movements in a single direction, and of course we're not going to do that for all of our enemies, even if we did it just for one or two, but um, they're going to have some kind of decision making of, well, every second pick a random direction or some, something of that kind of nature. So as I say, there's definitely going to be more data in the object array. But I think um, I think today we've made a reasonable start. You know, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's come along a little bit. And um, hopefully this is sort of showing you how from a relatively simple beginnings, we can progress things a little bit. I'm going to have to reread my documentation on the joystick routine. Um, I am going to get rid of that joystick firmware routine here because I don't like firmware routines. They do mysterious things. You never know quite what they're changing. Are they using IX, IY? And also, if we stop using the firmware, we can turn off the interrupt handler. And that will, um, again, give us more control of things. And for a simple game like this, we want to try and take all of the control. So there we go. Well, anyway, um, my alarm will be telling me to stop streaming in a few moments. So um, I will just say thank you to everyone who's joined me. I'm sure some of you are at quite in, in sociable um, times of day and you know, early morning and things. So it's very kind of you to join me. Really appreciate it. If you want to see a more casual stream, there will be a gaming stream tomorrow at um, it's 6 p.m. Japan time. 
which is um i think that's about 10 a.m uk time um please check the youtube channel it will tell you what the correct time for your time zone is but um as i said before i will be playing the 201 game system i did on the last chibi Cade stream this is the second one and we'll be playing each game for a single minute or 200 of them so it'll be about 200 plus minute stream and i will be giving each one a review i'll be scoring them on two categories how enjoyable the game is and how good a job i think the developer did because i don't know how all of these are unique games to that system and i i assume that they're sort of i mean i don't think they're homebrew as such but i assume some um some poor Chinese coder was furiously programming their way at them and some of them are pretty bad and I think some of them are pretty good so I, I'm going to say how fun they are and how impressive as a game they are just I mean just as, as much as anything for a start I'll be giving away one of these machines but also I think I think as a, if you're looking to learn developing I think you just need to take a step back and stop looking at the um, the Metroids and the um, and the Mega Man games and just look at well, what is actually fun as a simple little game? What what is the what is the things you should be looking to aim for as a beginner, and you should be, you know, just just remembering that you don't need the best graphics to have a, a damn good time playing a little game. Um, so as I say, I'll be I'll be reviewing them on both of those things, and we'll we'll see we'll see how well those coders did on their job. And again, if you are doing any assembly programming, however simple, please post on my forum in the um, show and tell because i'm going to be giving away a second unit of that mini arcade machine um to a random person who posts in that form over the next two or two and a half months because i do ha i actually own two units i i bought a second one because i didn't want to risk messing with the prize anymore because i thought i might break it so i bought a second unit and it's that second unopened unit i will be giving away and it's the one i played before that i'll be playing again in tomorrow's stream and we'll see how good those games are well, I'd say this, this stream, if you're new to it, happens every week. So um, we'll be continuing with the work we've done today. And we're going to try and take this Quest game all the way up to something that's hopefully playable and hopefully a bit of fun. And I have no idea how that's going to go. So um, if you're interested in seeing it, how it goes and if you're seeing if I have a um, debugging-induced nervous breakdown, please tune in next week and um, we'll have to see what happens. Well, anyway... Oh, my... Um, streaming switch isn't working there we go i really appreciate everyone for watching today and that snowman should not be there go away there we go um so yep thanks everyone for watching uh you can see the old patreon names going past there so thanks to my patreons of course um and hopefully um if you're interested you'll catch me in a stream at a later date and um if you don't get the chance to do that um assuming this Y quest gets finished to something it will become a proper tutorial series all nicely code commented and um you know optimized and we'll be covering that on um hopefully all of the 8-bit systems and with any luck the 16-bit systems as well um as well as i said before we've got all these new tutorials coming over the next few weeks on on the, the 8086 the arm and the risk 5 and you know, hopefully pdp 11 which is what i'm going to be spending the bulk of today working on so um please stick around for that anyway thanks for watching today and goodbye <laughs>